Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game. Ren here. And if you're a fan of RPGs and general discussions about the games we all know and love, then you've definitely found a friend in this channel. I post at least once a week on topics from pickup videos, new releases, to just chatting about the games that have reached hallowed status in my heart. So thank you so much for watching. And today I want to share with you my top 10 Vita RPGs that I own. I'm new to the console, I'm having a blast with it, and I can't wait to share. Let's check it out. Number 10, Demon's Tear. Okay, starting off in different territory here, I'll admit it. But look, this game is addictive and it's just a blast for me. I'm a recent convert to the roguelike genre thanks to the wonderful Dead Cells. Demon's Tear is simple and it's satisfying. Clear the game three times to get the true ending. Each run can take about 30 to 45-ish minutes. Not bad, huh? Okay, well I'm going to admit, those last two run-throughs can get pretty dicey because the damage scales and the boss mechanics just become more and more of a thing. There's something just satisfying about gearing up for that run and setting out on a grand adventure. The box art is also one of my absolute favorites. The pixel art is cute and the game's performance is very solid. I'm sad I missed out on Riddled Corpse, but if you're a fan of that game, then you can definitely find some value for your money here. Awesome game and so happy to have this one in my collection. Number 9. Sword Art Online Lost Song. Is this the greatest action RPG ever made? No. But man, it is a good anime game to me. I love the anime, and this game feels like it's a part of that world. The combat is such an action RPG joyride with its approach, and it works hand-in-hand -hand with the story premise. You are a player in an online virtual world. So I get a kick out of the lingo used in Sword Art Online to discuss strategy and gameplay mechanics. As someone who played MMORPGs almost exclusively for 15 years, I feel right at home with this one. And this game is still cheap, and it's a lot of fun to play. The anime is a blast to watch, so give it a look before you dive into this one, because I really do think a large amount of my enjoyment from this title comes from me kind of fanboying over all the characters and the surprisingly smooth combat. The flying mechanics work shockingly well, and soaring through the skies objective to objective is a rush. Great title, and pick it up while it's still cheap on Amazon. Number 8. Sheeran the Wanderer, The Tower of Fortune, and The Dice of Fate. The roguelike genre has blown up for me, and titles like this and Demon's Tear just show that the Vita has some really solid additions to the genre with an RPG twist. Xenocrisis is also one I love on the Vita, but there isn't enough RPG mechanics in that like Sheeran. This game is perfect for shorter play sessions. Now I will admit this is a much harder video game than other roguelikes, but there is a beauty in that. The planning process for Sheeran feels much more daunting as a full run of the game takes longer than something like Dead Cells or Demon's Tear. However, this is a sense of challenge and it creates a foreboding nature that helps play into your strategy. This title will definitely not be for everyone though. It does have a longer tutorial system and there's just a lot of moving parts for a game that looks like you match X on an enemy. But with item management, and knowing when to use something or just when to cut and run for help, it helps flesh out the complex strategy goodness that can be had with this title. I'm really psyched to dive into the Wii title as well this year, but if you're in the mood for a good roguelike RPG that can give you a challenge, then pick this one up while it's still fairly cheap. Number 7. Akiba's Trip Well, I can explain. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Don't click away. Come back. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'll explain. Okay, I can't explain, but this game is hilarious and the combat is unique. That's it. I, you know, I just laughed really hard at how absurd this game is. And I'll be honest, I've never played a game as bizarre as this one. The concept and story are actually Pulitzer Prize material. Not really. There's vampires in the world. 
and we must expose them to sunlight. I mean, without getting our own clothes removed first. Only in Japan, my friends. <laughs> Only in Japan. You know, the game doesn't overstay its welcome either. You know, I picked this one up for a laugh, and it's enjoyable combat, and then I hide it away afterwards. Okay, it's not the most controversial game ever made, but it's definitely the most bizarre one in my collection. The difficulty is not bad at all. If you need an action RPG that'll give you a laugh, but not too brutal of a challenge, then I highly recommend this one to you. Number six, Dragon's Crown. Look, if you're watching this and you own Dragon's Crown on the PS Vita, then let's be friends so I can finally play Dragon's Crown on the Vita with another person. You know, I have two friends who own this game. That's right, I said two, and I can't get them to play it with me. The attention span of modern day gamers is pretty rough, and the nightmare fuel that can also be backlogs is very much a real threat, so I get it. This game is unlike any other that I've played in such a long time, though, because it's a beat-em-up RPG fan friggin tastic time to play. The art style is so iconic, and the combat is so friggin' cool. I've personally never played a side-scrolling beat-em-up RPG before, but good golly does it work. I hope there can be a sequel to this in the near future, because it was so fun to play. I can pick this one up and put it down easily, which is perfect for when I need a breather from some of the monster-length JRPGs that I'm so in love with. The upgrade system and move sets are simple, and it's easy to get into. This just frees you up to have a beat-em-up jamboree. If you don't own this game yet, then definitely pick it up, and then add me as a friend so we can slay monsters together. Number 5. Lost Dimension Atlas are the proverbial kings of turn-based RPGs for me. They are constantly innovating or even just publishing games that consistently satisfy what I'm looking for when I play RPGs. Lost Dimension is such an incredible addition to anyone's PS Vita library. Please bring this to Switch. The story is intriguing and the stakes are high for every character. The combat here is a mix of turn-based combat and arena field combat, kind of similar to what you'll see in the Trails of series. This foundation makes for some satisfying combat and strategy gameplay as you uncover the mysteries in this incredible title. If you've not played Lost Dimension, then definitely check it out. The characters are really well done and the graphics are commendable on the PS Vita. This presentation helps keep you invested as the story can definitely take some darker turns that will have you on the edge of your seat. Each floor is just another level of suspense as characters and development are done in a superb way. Also, this isn't that long of a video game, so you don't have to worry about it overstaying its welcome. You're going to be looking at around 20 to 25 hours to complete the main story and most of the extra content. Good luck in this one, because at the end of every chapter, it became an almost moral crisis for me and what to do and who to choose as the traitor. I'll leave it at that. Number four, Tokyo Xanadu. Three of my favorite game series are the Trails of Cold Steel games, the Persona series, and the Ease titles. So let's take the social sim portion of Persona with the assets of Cold Steel and throw in the glorious Ease action RPG combat. <laughs> and that's how Tokyo Xanadu for the PS Vita was born, my friends. Look, the game story is not going to knock your socks off, but it has a lot of charm. And if you're a fan of the Cold Steel games and the vibe they have, then you're going to feel right at home here. The only difference is the setting in modern day Tokyo. I really fell in love with this game. It is a pretty decently long game for an action RPG, but hey, you're going to get some value for your money here. The average time it's going to take to complete this game is around 40-ish hours, and that's to get the good ending. Falcom's just one of my favorite companies. You have a straight killer soundtrack with a friggin' awesome anime opener that I find myself watching time and time again. If you're antsy while waiting for Ease to come out on the Switch this year, then pick this gem up. You are going to find some enjoyment in it. Number 3. Ease Memories of Salsetta 
Now, I want to begin by saying that I actually own Ease 8 for the Nintendo Switch. However, I did not own it for the Vita. Otherwise, it would definitely be my choice. Now, I need to gush about memories of Celseta. This game is fan friggin tastic. There's actually elements of this game that I like more than Ease 8, and I think it's actually just comes down to the length of the game. This should take you anywhere from like 20 to 30 hours to complete. If you're going to want the true ending in 8, however, you're looking at about 50 to 55 hours, which is pretty hefty. Both of these titles are cornerstones in the action RPG genre for me. The combat is so fluid, fast-paced, and stellar as all get out. There's a lot of bosses in this game that feel unique and will provide a satisfying and well-balanced challenge. And I actually found the final boss of Memories of Celseta to be harder than the true boss of Ease 8, but that's only my subjective opinion. Memories of Celseta has a gorgeous world to explore, and the cast of characters is one of my favorites in the series. This game doesn't get the credit it deserves. I love this title, and I fully plan on going back and playing it through again. The story follows our trusty hero Adol as he's suffering from amnesia. Recovering his memory is the key to solving the mysteries of Celseta. Love this game. And while recording this, I had a really difficult time pulling myself away from its addictive gameplay. Check this bad boy out. Number 2. Trails of Cold Steel 2. One owns as well, but let's be real here. Two is greatest of all time. Trails of Cold Steel 2. Woo, boy. Reen, you're my bro. I love this guy, and after that jaw-dropping, soul-crushing cliffhanger that was the end of Cold Steel 1, I just can't help but thank my lucky stars. 2 was already out, and I could jump straight into it. Cold Steel 2 is the culmination of character growth and world-building from Cold Steel 1. I love 1, but the payoff you get in 2 is literally mind-blowing. I cannot put into words how incredible this entry is. The performance on the Vita is top-notch. Zones load so fast, and loading into combat is efficient. The story is fast-paced, and gathering the team together to go on an impossible mission is one of my favorite tropes in storytelling. Looking at you, Mass Effect 2. Reen is on a grand adventure, and you feel that excitement and high-stakes feeling all throughout the story. The changes and improvements made to this combat system are my favorite, and actually, the combat from this entry is in my top five favorite turn-based combat systems in the entire genre. Setting up those devastating hits or lining up your AoE abilities to hit everyone hits all the right synapses in my brain. I finished the third entry for the Switch last year, and it's killing me to wait and transfer my save over to the fourth one when it comes out this year. I mean, I gotta continue on my romance with Emma best girl. I'm so hyped and dying to get back into the story. If you've never played a Trails game before, then I highly recommend you start with Cold Seal 1 at the very least, which is what I did. Now, the best thing to do would be to start at the very beginning with like Trails in the Sky, but sadly that wasn't an option for me. The investment is real, but the payout for playing this gym is worth the price of admission. I played this on the Vita, but you can also play this entire series on the PS4 and Steam. Hopefully one day, they'll port all the others to Switch and localize the Crossbell arc, please. Number 1. Persona 4 Golden Is anyone surprised by this number 1? I know, I know, we all saw it coming a mile away. Heck, if you watch this channel you know that I am unapologetically an insane person for the Persona and SMT series. Persona 4 Golden is the de facto JRPG. The story, characters, and gameplay are staples of the genre. Persona 4 has one of my favorite introductions to the story. Now luckily, the story is tantalizing and mysterious because it is also one of the longest intros to be able to get to that first fight in any game. Persona 3 deserves a remake, but I digress. The characters of Persona 4 are arguably one of the best cast of characters in all of gaming. Heck, they may in fact be number one. Everyone is a friend to one another and their friendships feel real. 
Yosuke is a top shelf friend who needs to start wearing a cup when he rides his bike. Chie is best girl, and Rize is the best support character in all the franchise. She's so helpful. I love you, Oracle, but I'm sorry. The character growth in this particular Persona game is the best examples of character growth in the series for me. The castles and exploring the innermost trials of the party members, well, it just helps put their growth as characters on display. We laugh, we solve mysteries, and when we hear the song Heaven, we have a complete freakout and begin crying. On to gameplay. The press turn battle system is my all-time favorite battle system in turn-based gaming. Now, I played the Persona series in reverse order, beginning with Persona 5 Royal. I really like the shuffle mechanic. It's much easier than having to negotiate with Personas or Demons. Quick disclaimer. After finishing the SMT series, I still prefer negotiating with Personas or Demons, so come on, SMT 5. There's just no getting around it. Persona 4 Golden is the perfect feel-good JRPG outside of the song Heaven. I cannot recommend it enough to fans of the genre, and it is easily one of the greatest RPGs ever made. Well, guys, as we wrap up today's video, I want to go ahead and share some of the amazing responses I got on Twitter. I really appreciate your guys' input, and you guys have amazing taste in games, so I'm really excited to check some of these games out. At Simon Stevens 187 shared, There's so many to choose from. But I spent the most time with these in Orishika, Muramasa Rebirth, Takaiden 2, Soul Sacrifice Delta. The Big Bridge of New Beginnings 2021 says, A few of my favorite Vita RPGs, Ease 8, Lacrimosa Odana, Persona 4 Golden, Grand Kingdom, The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, Odin Sphere, Final Fantasy X, World of Final Fantasy, Freedom Wars, Soul Sacrifice Delta, Undertale. At Chipper VA, Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Donna, Persona 4 Golden, Odin Sphere, and Steam World Heist. Thank you guys so much for sharing these. I'm very excited to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of today's video. I had so much fun making this list. And I also want to thank everyone who responded to my post on Twitter and gave me some amazing suggestions. I can't wait to get to them all, but right now I have Odin Sphere. Muramasa Rebirth, and Takaiden 2 on the way, so I can't wait to share those with you in the future. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can hang out again in the future. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.